Hello and welcome to this online edition of OU Nightly. I'm Brooke Mursky coming to you from my hometown of Houston, Texas. COVID-19 keeps us off campus and out of our regular studio, but we're still dedicated to bringing you this newscast. We begin tonight with two more positive cases of COVID-19 reported at Tinker Air Force Base this morning. This brings the total cases at the base to 15. These photos provided by the U.S. Air Force show that the base is taking several precautions to try and slow the spread, including drive through questionnaires for personnel returning from deployment, sick tents set up outside medical clinics to determine if a patient may be at risk for COVID-19, and other measures, including intense cleaning. The cases at Tinker are in line with news that 1.4 million military members have tested positive for COVID-19. Because we are not only continuing to defend our nation, but also supporting state and local authorities, DOD personnel may well have a higher rate of infection. But given our type, uh, demographics of our population, we will also have a lower hospitalization rate. Gate security at all bases has increased and visitors must have adequate credentials or official business to gain entry. That news comes as Oklahoma's cases of COVID-19 continue to climb, a 10% increase over the number yesterday. Right now in Oklahoma, there are over 1,600 positive re test results and 80 reported deaths. We also know that 415 Oklahomans are in the hospital. New employment numbers out today show a sharp increase in those filing for unemployment in Oklahoma and across the country. 50,000 people are filing for unemployment in Oklahoma this week according to the Oklahoma Employment Security Commission. Nationally, 16 million people have now filed for unemployment, according to the U.S. Labor Department. That means more than 1 in 10 workers have lost a job in just the last three weeks due to the coronavirus outbreak, the largest and fastest string of job losses since 1948. The Cleveland County Health Department held drive through COVID-19 testing today. Officials administered tests at Griffin Park on Robinson Street in Norman. Hundreds of cars went through the testing area. No word on when or if more drive through testing will be offered in Norman. The Pioneer Library System headquartered in Norman made its first delivery of its printed personal protective equipment today to Norman Regional Health Services Wednesday afternoon. Lindsay Gibbs shows us how one Norman institution is helping another. Set, start, and wait. That's what Dr. Chris Hennis does every few hours from his home. However, those few hours are now crucial to the Norman community as the Norman Pioneer Library System's 3D printers make protective equipment for doctors and nurses fighting COVID-19. The tricks with the, all of these medical professionals is that they were never staffed up. The hospitals were never equipped to have literally every single human being in these clinics and in these places with this level of gear. Norman residents like Dr. Hennis have come together in a Facebook group working with Norman Regional Health Services to make PPEs like plastic face masks. I mean, it's, uh, you know, this has been a, a really great community effort. I am far from the only person involved in this. I'm not in charge of this. Uh, you know, really, Michael, Michael Graff has taken the point on this and just run with it. And so uh, we have some amazing people here in this community. The first delivery of the PPEs were made to the Norman Regional Hospital on Wednesday. Future deliveries will be made as this equipment continues to be produced by Norman's very own residents. You know, that's really exciting to finally get them in doctors' hands and get them in the healers' hands. It's nice to get them out and actually get to talk with some of the people, uh, you know, and I got to, got to talk to a couple of the people who are wearing them. As COVID-19 continues to spread, so does the unification of our communities. Lindsay Gibbs, OU Nightly. To find out more about how you can help, you can visit their Facebook page called Norman slash OKC PPE Squad. Since many OU students are from Texas, we are tracking COVID-19 in that state too. There are more than 10,000 positive cases in Texas today with a total number of deaths reaching almost 200. The most cases are reported in Harris County, which includes the greater Houston area, followed by Dallas County and the Austin area in Travis County. The number of cases nationally reached a staggering number yesterday with over 16,000 
deaths reported. Across the country, we know positive cases are more than 450,000 and deaths now top 16,000 nationwide. New York experienced a third straight daily record of deaths from COVID-19 with 799 fatalities yesterday. International cases also continue to grow. Johns Hopkins University reports over 1.4 million cases around the globe. The U.S. leads with the most confirmed cases, followed by Spain and Italy. Some good news now. The U.K. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is no longer in the ICU. A Downing Street spokesman said Johnson is still in the hospital and being closely monitored in these early stages of his recovery. President Trump tweeted his well wishes to the Prime Minister after getting word of his status. We also know China is beginning to lift lockdowns on major cities after several days of no new coronavirus cases. Teachers and students in Shanghai have been given a timeline for when they can return to school. Officials say this will be a gradual return and they caution there could still be a second wave. Hey, good afternoon. Happy Thursday to all of you. I'm currently in the northwest suburbs of Chicago at the moment. Temperatures here are in the mid to upper 40s, uh, 49 in Joliet, 47 downtown Chicago right now. But in the Sooner State, temperatures are in the mid to upper 60s, even 70s as you head down towards the south near Ardmore at 72, 69 in Lawton, 67 in Norman at this hour. Now we are tracking some severe weather potential for Friday and on into Saturday as well. Marginal risk for severe weather tomorrow in western Texas and eastern New Mexico. And then by Saturday, that marginal risk does include our neck of the woods as well, southern Oklahoma, western Oklahoma, and a slight risk in central Texas. Now, these storms that pop up have the potential for damaging winds and even some hail as well. Tornado threat is low, and it, might, it will remain low, uh, but we'll see how this plays out over the coming days. So overnight tonight, we'll see a low temperature of 42 degrees. Clouds will be decreasing overnight. It'll be cool and breezy. Winds out of the northeast blowing at 7 to 12 miles per hour. And then tomorrow, our daytime high temperature of 64 degrees. Plenty of sunshine to work with out here. It's going to be a great day to go outside, practice social distancing, go for a walk. A few showers will be possible, though, tomorrow night. Uh, just those showers will be sliding on into the area and then quickly moving out uh, tomorrow night. So high temperatures across the board, 64 in Norman, 66 in Lawton, and 66 in in Ardmore. So that full seven-day forecast shows uh, our next chance of precipitation on Saturday and Easter Sunday looks very nice. High temperatures in the upper 60s and a big cool down of unseasonably cool temperatures by the early part of next week. Hello, I'm Dylan Rivera bringing you today's sports headlines from Norman, Oklahoma. We begin tonight with the NBA announcing all those participating in the horse challenge between NBA players and legends, as well as a couple of familiar faces from the WNBA. Former Oklahoma Sooner and current Hawks guard Trey Young is one of the competition's eight participants. He'll go up against Mike Conley and basketball legends Tamika Catchings and Chauncey Billups. Group two consists of Oklahoma City Thunder star Chris Paul along with Zach Levine, the Chicago Skies' Allie Quigley, and NBA legend Paul Pierce. The contest is set to take place this Sunday at 7 on ESPN. Today is a sad day for golf fans as it would have been the first day of the 2020 Masters Tournament. Back on March 13th, the Masters was officially postponed due to COVID-19 concerns, and now we'll have to wait until November to see who claims this year's coveted green jacket. On this day three years ago, Russell Westbrook had a historic performance. How about 50 points, 16 rebounds, 10 assists, a game-winning three from way downtown, and oh yeah, just his 42nd triple-double to pass Oscar Robertson for the most in a single season. His incredible performance against the Nuggets in 2017 all but sealed his eventual MVP win. And a little bit of positivity being spread by way of the two-time NBA MVP Steph Curry yesterday. The Warriors guard FaceTimed some of the nurses and doctors that are on the front lines of this pandemic to thank them for what they do. I love it. I can't thank God enough for uh, what you're doing. And just the sacrifice, selflessness, the way that everybody's coming together. Thank you so much for you know, just what you do, your heart, and, uh, and the inspiration y'all provide for everybody. That's all from the sports world. Brooke, back over to you. Thanks, Dylan. We leave you tonight on a lighter note. The cast of Full House is in full quarantine. John Stamos, Bob Saget, and some of the other Full House characters recreated the iconic intro to the show, but quarantine style. You'll see lots of hand sanitizer, cleaning supplies, and their usual antics. They ended the video with a reminder to stay safe and stay home. 
Thanks for watching this online edition of OU Nightly produced during the COVID-19 outbreak. Follow OU Nightly on social media for daily updates and send us your story ideas. Reporting from Houston, Texas, I'm Brooke Mursky. Good night.